And this preacher, whom I love dearly, became a raving alcoholic. Now, is that going to happen with everybody? No. Is that going to happen with most? I don't know. But, but it happened to him, and what a grief. And it started, tore his family up, destroyed his children. Later, he repented and got out of it, and that's great. But I, just something in me, it was God's voice, you know, saying, I, I'm not going to do that. Now, in my, in my youth, in my teenagehood, before I became a Christian at about 18 years old, I did many sins and was not a nice boy. But I thank God I didn't drink and didn't get, you know, uh, tied into that. And I kept me away from drugs, too. Same, same kind of thing. So, you know... Here, if a son turns and does the right thing, he says he's not going to, he's going to be blessed. So, you know, you know what I, I think this verse in Exodus, and it's also in Deuteronomy of 14, Numbers 14 and Deuteronomy 5, uh, but this verse about the sins of the fathers visited upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh, this, even this, is talking about God's mercy. And I want you to look in Genesis 15. God, he says there in Exodus 18, God has no pleasure in the death of a sinner. You know, if God does it, isn't blessed or, man, that's great, I wiped that sinner out. That was a lot of fun, you know. Maybe some of them, we've had feelings like that, you know. Somebody gave me a little gift one time. It was a, a little thing you put on your dashboard, and you could punch buttons, and it would be like a bomb. Or, or you know, you punch another button, it's like a machine gun. <laughs> you know, or a shotgun. <laughs> and when cars would cut you off in traffic, and I'd reach up there and punch a button and give them, you know, a just recompense of reward. <laughs> I got to enjoy that so much. <laughs> it was starting to affect me. It was like, yeah, I had that thing. And I had to take it away. I had to remove it. But uh, God doesn't have any pleasure in that. And notice here in Genesis 15, this is when God is telling Abraham about what's going to be happening in the future. And you know, it's where Abraham hears the gospel and he believes God and it's counted unto him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, he's told him in, in Genesis 12, God says, I'll curse them that curse you and I'll bless them that bless you. Because in you, Abraham, coming through you unto Jesus, he says, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. God is wanting to bless us. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And he says, he says in, uh, in, in 15, he, Abraham offers a sacrifice as God instructs him to. And then he, he has a, a dream. And it says in verse 13, God said to Abraham, Know of a surety that your seed, your children, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. Speaking about Is uh, Egypt. And also that nations whom they shall serve will I judge. 
and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace. You know, Abraham, you're going to die. And you'll be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come here again. He was in Canaan. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. You know, sometimes when we read about God judging nations in the Old Testament, and again, people jump up and say, that's not fair. God's ways are not right. And God says, your ways are not right. Or my, my ways are right, your ways are not right. But here was, uh, when God uh, delivered Canaan land into the hands of Israel, they killed a lot of people. Israel killed a lot of people. And, but in God's judgment, God said that was right. That was just. But I want you to notice how God looks at it. These people are so evil. They sacrifice their children in the fire. And they worship devils. And they just, when the archaeologists discovered their hieroglyphics type writing, they, they got sick to their stomachs and threw up at the things that they read about and the pictures they saw. Uh, and here is a nation that is so evil that God says, I'm going to destroy them. And you, Israel, are going to take over this land. The descendants of Abraham are going to take over this land. And then God says, but we're going to wait 400 years because the iniquity, and in the fourth generation, God visiting the sins of the fathers unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. What God is saying, I'm going to give them four more generations to repent. I'm going to, this evil people that I could destroy right now and not, and, and be just, and right is He. I'm going to give them four more generations to repent. And, you know, we see that same thing with Nineveh. God sent Noah 40 days and Nineveh shall perish. And they repented. And God spared him. 150 years later, God destroyed Nineveh. And they, they returned to their evil. 